Hi. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you for asking. All right, what is new? Um, so I was able to move my exam to the 24th, so I got a spot. Oh, nice. This was... Yeah. What'd you say? Oh, yeah, that's awesome. This was, uh, what, what month What was we wanted, yeah. Mm -hmm. What month was it again? So May. Oh, okay. May, what was it? 24th. So we moved Wow. it from the 11th to the 24th. Okay. Got it, got it. All right. How is everything else? Mm -hmm. I think it's good. Um, I did the bland review, as you mentioned, and I realized for um, psych social, the ones that I missed, it was mostly just definition that I didn't get to through my Anki. So whenever I went back to it, it was either a definition thing um, or I moved too fast where I didn't read the, I didn't read the full question. So I noticed that in psych Soch, and I also noticed that in a little bit of chem phys, um, where I would just be like, oh, I remember seeing this, this is the answer, and I didn't read the question fully. So that was that was on me. <laughs> um, So, yeah. so something that I, yeah, so that's an actual, uh, that's actually an important thing to, 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 to talk about because, uh, that happens with a lot, a lot of students. Um, a lot of times students, like they'll kind of like rush through the passage. And then when they read the question, they rush through the question and then they just start looking at the, the different choices and they just start just looking for choices that, use the same language that's used in the passage, like they're doing mix and match. Um, yeah, you don't want to do that. You want to make sure, so so to prevent that from happening, um, when you read the question for, you know, the for, for a passage or whatever, yeah. uh, Mm -hmm. try, uh, rephrase it or put it in your own words. Okay. Yeah, that might, Okay. that might not be like that necessary for, like the science sections, but for cars, definitely um, try to rephrase the question. Uh, but yeah, in general, you just want to make sure that you, you, you know, uh, let yourself understand what the question is asking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it happened mostly in chemphys because I just timing wise with chemphys, but psych search that was just me not because I always have like at least like 15, 20 minutes after um, psych search. So I just need to be more careful with that. Um, but yeah, that's good to know. Just rephrase the question. Okay, noted. Yeah, and uh, and then it, when it comes to the terms in psych social, that's also like you know super common. So I usually, yeah. So um, like, do you know how to make like your own Anki cards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think I told you last time that all the questions that I, let me pull it up, all the questions that I've missed, I've made Anki cards for. Um, Yeah, so I've done that before, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's especially true for psych Yeah. Yeah. Even if you get something right, there's a term in the choices, you know, you want to look up that term. Uh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah, and I found that to be super helpful. Um, and that's another reason why I think psych social is moving up compared to the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the section where everyone can, where anyone can really like, Bring that far up by by learning as much as possible. Um, <laughs> so okay, what would you like to go over today? okay, so um, when I was going through campus, I can... I guess share my screen. I have a couple questions that I um had highlighted. Yep. Okay, so this question, um, I remember seeing like again circuits. I have to I have it on my to do list to watch the Khan Academy videos. Um but I could even go over that with you. Um, you know? yeah, we can, yeah. I was just saying like I Theoretically, like I've done the Anki cards to this, so I know like the equations. Yep. Um, so it's like, I just don't know like the concept behind it. Like this question has actually nothing to do with circuits. This is, Uh huh. yeah. But um, I know the equations, but if you don't know what they mean, it's really not helpful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. okay. So, do you have a question on this problem? So this specific one, so I, I got it wrong the second time when I also did it. And my idea, okay, I guess I'll let you read the question first. Oh, no, no, go ahead.
Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So I I was just thinking about like periodic table trends and knowing that like atomic size versus atomic radius. And I thought they were referring to atomic size, which goes up as you go left and down on the periodic table. But they were talking about atomic radius, which goes up when you go to the right and up to the periodic table. No, no, And you're you're right in what you said okay. Uh the first time, right? huh. But meaning atomic size or atomic radius goes up, increases as you go left and down. So you're right about that. Mm hmm Now, what is different would be if it's an ion. okay okay So like imagine imagine um do you like to go to the gym let's say yeah yeah sure what's like a workout that you like to do um jump rope oh uh, what about one that involves like maybe like weight mm -hmm. um we can say like the smith machine okay yeah yeah so so imagine the you know you're doing your your bench or your, whatever you're doing on the smith machine Mm hmm And, you know, we, let's say we put down like the two, let's say we took, put like two plates, you know, one on each side. mm hmm Uh, or let's say we start off with, so here, I'll even like kind of draw it. Let's say that we start off with, here. I can stop my share. No, 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 you Yeah. leave it. Cause I was going to draw on that. Oh, okay. Uh Yeah. So let's say this is the. bar with these two weights on it and you know let's say that you're able to um do like i don't know like a couple of like let's just say like one rep or something right Mm -hmm. now let's say then we remove like these two plates you should be able to do more than one rep right Yeah. So now imagine, you know, an atom and like like this, where there's one proton and one electron. Uh, since they're oppositely charged, the proton is trying is, is is going to try to bring that electron towards itself as as close as it can bring it to, to itself, right? Now, imagine we go from one electron to two, but we don't change the number of, of protons. That means that that proton, it would be the equivalent of adding weights here, because now that proton, its pull is spread across more than one electron. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if it's spread across more than one Um, electron, it would have a harder time bringing it in. Mm -hmm. So, so this is an anion, right? Which is in a negatively charged Mm ion. -hmm. Yeah. And that's larger than the atom, like the way it is normally when it's not charged. And now let's think about, um, the opposite like let's say that so let's say we get rid of this right or Yeah. maybe let's just start it out with with the two electrons here so let's just say that the two electrons is the normal i'll, I'll draw two protons too just to make it consistent let's just say that this is the normal atom right and so if i add another electron same thing like it won't be able to bring it in as close But let's say that I remove an electron. Now, the protons, instead of having to pull two electrons in, they just have to pull one electron in, which means that they can pull it in closer to themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the cation, aka positively charged ion, Mm -hmm. will be smaller than the atomic radius. Okay. Yeah, this is a very high yield concept that they ask a lot because like if you put yourself into like you'll get to the point where you put where you could put yourself into the 
mindset of the person who made the test. Mm -hmm. And so the mindset is like, all right, every pre-med knows their periodic trends. Mm -hmm. you no know, atomic radius goes down, you know, oh, sorry, goes up as you go left on the periodic cable and down on the periodic cable. Mm -hmm. So how can we make a question that will make them do that to look in the periodic table and make that wrong conclusion? And so mm -hmm. the way that they do that is by testing you on ionic radius. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So if, 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 you know, if, if an atom loses electrons, it can bring it in closer. If it gains mm -hmm. electrons, mm -hmm. it, it won't be able to bring it in as close. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So, I, uh huh. Ionic radius didn't even click in my head. It did say ions. Okay. That's okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Because uh, because I think so. You chose D because if you looked at the periodic table, right, mm -hmm. it would be, it would be like up and to the right. Yeah. So it would have a smaller atomic radius, right? Yeah. So that's why you know it makes sense that you chose D, right? Yeah, uh, that's yeah my thought process. Yep, yep, and it's a good it's a good thought process because of that reason. Mm -hmm. But you see how like the test taker they want to have people do that. Yeah. Um. So. Noted. All right. Well, thank you. I would say that. Yeah. Probably like maybe like even like maybe like fifty percent probably chose this or something. Yeah, because I immediately crossed out A, and then I was like, okay, sodium's on this side and chloride is on this side, so it's either one of those and the trend chloride. Just yeah. 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 And you also, I guess, noticed like. You know, zero charge plus charge plus charge mm -hmm. minus charge. So you probably were thinking, okay, these two are similar, so they can't be it. Yeah. <laughs> you, your your what your think your thought process and everything is valid. Okay. But you're still doing that, uh, to the best. All right. Well, that's I'll add that to my flashcards. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, okay, so yeah, so like back to circuits. Um, like I said, I was gonna do a Khan Academy video on it. Um and like in terms of like the equation, I know resistors and capacitators and series and parallel. So like I know those equations, it's just and I don't think he even asked me to calculate anything on this section, but Oh, they they definitely did. Yeah. Um, okay, I probably just otherwise like, they won't give you all uh, all that stuff, right? In the in the chart. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to, huh? this is a, another question where it was just like, I don't know if this, yeah, like something like this, but I think it just goes back to the circuits. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if you want, we can go over. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, we can do it. So. Cause yeah, that's like one of the things that we can do during our sessions. Like if there's a topic that you want me to go over and like, a time a shorter time than it would take to like yeah <laughs> should i stop the share or uh yeah all right um okay so You uh so you so you know like about the like electrostatic force and stuff, right? Yeah, EMF, yeah. Okay, so um okay, so I guess we can talk about uh let's see. Uh, do you want to, so what, what's, so something that could be kind of difficult is voltage. Mm -hmm. What do you think voltage is? So whenever, I 
Okay, so like I know I have this like um like a ladybug where it's like V then I R and I know that's like Ohm's law and that's my concept of okay, if they give you voltage you can calculate I you can calculate R, but if they give you one, you kinda just like work around like the ladybug. Um but like I said, these are all just <laughs> flashcards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's think about what it actually means, right? Okay. So, so I drew these two plates, and these are the lines for and the electric field here. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, would you be able to guess what charges the plates are? Probably negative and positive. Oh yeah, but uh, which one? This one. Oh, um, probably going from the positive to the negative. Uh, so so which one would be positive? The one. So on the left would be positive, and the right would be negative. Good. So that's just by convention. Um, electric field lines go from positive to negative. Mm -hmm. So okay, these are positive. This stuff is negative. OK. And let's say that someone, let's say someone, uh, so let's say we have a, OK, let's say we have a like proton here. Mm -hmm. What would happen if we just l put that pro proton there? What would happen to it? I probably move towards the negatively charged side. Good. So let's imagine this is you, and you are pushing that proton in this direction. So let's say from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. So you're going against, you're pushing it against the electric field, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what this means is, or rather, so, so what voltage is, and you know, it's also called like, potential right and uh the potential can kind of also make you think you know potential energy and things like that yeah but what it is is um the work in what's the unit for work joules mm -hmm. so it's the work in joules um Per Coulomb of charge that's required to move um, that uh, test charge against its electric field. Mm -hmm. So if you could imagine like the work it takes to push that positively charged uh, particle against that electric field, that is what voltage is, which is why it's in joules per coulomb. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so I'm thinking of whether I should talk about, um, electric field and how to get that. Um, okay, I'll just do that really quickly. So okay. I just want you to see that. So 
What's the universal law of gravitation? Do you remember that formula? F equals to ma. Uh, so that's just you know. Oh, oh you mean like g? Mm -hmm. Like this. Does this ring a bell? Oh, you mean I? Sorry, <laughs> you mean like um. I think I'm having a brain fart, but I know what you mean in my head, I think. Yeah, so so this is the universal law of gravitation. And it's, you know, between two masses. Right, with the radius being the distance between the two. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so now let's think. So... For, okay, so let's say for Earth, right? Mm -hmm. Like let's, let's, let's make, um, let's make one of the masses Earth mm -hmm. and And, um, you know, the radius of the Earth we'll use as well. These are known values. I mean, we don't have to know it, but, you know, people know yeah. what the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth are. Yeah. So if you plug those in, And G is a constant as well, but mass of the Earth, second mass, and then radius of the Earth squared. What happens is these value, this value is your little g, aka, you know, your 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay. Right? Now... Which means that this simplifies into the force of gravity is equal to the mass. The mass two would be whatever mass we're dealing with in a question. Mm -hmm. And then multiplied by G, right? Yeah. So this G value, we usually see it as a an acceleration. Mm -hmm. But but you know that um that you know if you get rid of or to solve for g you would divide both sides by mass right yeah so so what that means is that you can also write this as 9.81 newtons over kilograms okay and what is the significance of that the significance is that um a one kilogram object experiences a 9.81 newton force within earth's uniform gravitational field oh i should have also mentioned the uniform part so like if we let's say we zo so in this drawing here let's say i zoomed in over here where i put that light blue box mm -hmm. if we zoomed in so deep like so much that we are where it's appears to be flat like mm -hmm. you know, on the earth surface then because you know all of the um, you know, gravitational field lines are going to be going, you know, towards the mass. Mm -hmm. So this is the uniform gravitational field on Earth. So that is, you know, what we what we experience. So that's where the M, you know, G part comes from. Okay.
Okay. Now, the reason I brought this up is because when you have, um, like, Coulomb's law, it's similar, right? It's a little k is a constant. It's q1, q2 over r squared. And it's between two point charges. But if we wanted this to become a uniform electric field, then that would mean that these terms will give us our electric field. Oops. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which would also mean, so, so since the gravitational field works on mass, the field strength could be measured as, you know, the force in Newton's per mass. Mm -hmm. For uh, the electrostatic force, it's between charges, right, instead of mass. Mm -hmm. So this would be like a force in Newtons that, you know, a charged particle experiences per Coulomb, per Coulomb of, of charge. Okay, okay, gotcha, okay, okay. That makes sense. Yep. So if we go back down here for the voltage, we can say that, um, we could say that the voltage at point B minus the voltage at point A will be equal to the change in potential energy of that test charge per Q, I'm just putting a, well, maybe I sh shouldn't put the T, but uh, Q for the test charge. I'm following, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, and then there's one more thing about this stuff up here. So, okay, what's the formula for work? Um, F R no, that's torque. F D cosine theta. Yep. And you know, if there, you want the angle to be zero degrees because that would mean that the cosine term is one, and yeah. it won't reduce that work. So, okay, so from our universal law of gravitation here, what if we wanted to figure out the potential energy instead of just the gravitational force? Um, the potential energy is U equals to MGH. Um, we need the height. So, before we get to that, just uh -huh. think about it for the point mass equation. So the question was, what was the question again? Um, so what would we have to do to turn this um, so, so I, I guess I could uh, tell you, so like for the potential energy, uh, gravitational potential energy, it would look like this, wait, uh, yeah, this. So what changed? The squared. Yeah. Now, why do you think that changed? Um... I think about that work formula. Like what must you do to force in order to get work? You have to, um, what is it called? Get the absolute value? Well, so, so tell me again, what's the work formula? Um, work equals to FR. Um, sorry, FD cosine theta. 
All right. So if we don't worry about the cosine part, it's just FD, right? Yeah. So, and R is just a, another form of distance, right? Yeah. So if you take the FG and you multiply it by distance or R, right? Wouldn't that cancel to give you just the R in the bottom? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why the potential energy would look like this, right? Yeah. And likewise, the potential, uh, the electrostatic potential energy. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so the change in voltage would be the change in this potential energy of that test charge. And we can also equate it to the electric field times that distance that it travels. Like uh between the plates, like between from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. So okay, that's what voltage is. Um, any questions? So I thought, so you said the electrical. So the equation I have in my head, I probably need to get away from the equation and think about the concept. But the equation I have in my head for electrical field is um, KQ over R squared. So you're saying I can just do you did KQ over R squared. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Over here, you see that's the part that's circled. Okay, gotcha. Okay, yeah. Um, so at the bottom where you said, um, the ED, I'm just confused about that part. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so okay. So if we know that the delta U is the K Q one Q two over R. Mm -hmm. Right. And um and if we know that oh and then if we know that this is the E, mm -hmm. the electric field, mm -hmm. that means that we can like plug it in over here. Mm -hmm. Right. But um so so okay, so if we did that, right, we would get the K Q over R squared times the or or rather let's see one sec oh. so okay this is the is um so this is the delta u mm -hmm. oh sorry okay this is the delta u and when we divide it by the q right we end up just getting the k q1 over r mm -hmm. right yes um and it okay now and uh so if this is our electric field over here um how do we go from this to that how do we go from kq over r squared to kqr kq over r yeah we would just multiply by r yep so that's the multiplication by the distance. Gotcha. Okay, 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 now it clicks. All right, thank you. Yep. Okay, any other questions so far? Uh, no, I it it's fitting in together, it makes sense. All right, cool. So all these, all these equations are related to voltage, Um, or I guess you can formulate them from to lead to voltage.
Oh, you, know, you mean like later on in the equation? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So now, all right, let's talk about some of these circuits. So, um, okay, so resistance, is equal to rho capital L over capital A and what the rho stands for is something called resistivity and that's just something that's going to be like an intrinsic property of whatever material that you're using Okay. And what do you think the L would stand for? Probably the length. Exactly. What about the A? Here we go. Okay. Um, now, I should also say that there's something called conductivity, which is expressed as a sigma. And so this is oh, sorry. conductivity. And that's the opposite of resistivity. So you would see that like, you know, conductivity is inversely proportional to resistivity. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, um, okay, so now if I drew, like, let's say this is, let's like take a wire and kind of like cut it in like half so we can see the cross sectional area. Mm -hmm. Um, and usually, you know, it'll be like copper or something, right? Like, look like copper, copper, um, atoms right and electricity is just the is just the the flow of electrons right mm -hmm. so let's say you know that's an electron that's an electron that's an electron and since it's traveling through this copper cable, the electrons are going to like brush up against the copper atoms. And that would cause friction, right? And when you have friction, what happens? Um, energy is... Uh-huh. What type of energy work is happening? Energy is created or released? So which one do you think? Um, created. So have you ever gotten like rug burn? Yeah. So how did that, how does that happen? Rug burn? It just goes back and forth and then your skin gets like broken down. So what does it feel like? Really rough. Oh, I mean, like the uh the rug burn. It feels warm. It feels warm. Okay. Yeah. Now, that so the rug burn happens when you have you when there's a lot of friction, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if it causes it you to feel or if it feels like warm or hot, the so heat is released. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, um. So yeah, yeah. I guess like in a lot of contexts, like friction. They ask you about it in some problem where you would have to calculate the force of friction or something like that. But mm -hmm. but this is like me asking you like what is it in the first place? Like what is friction? So it's basically rubbing or you know brushing up against things, uh, causing you know heat to be to be released. Mm -hmm. and it, 
heat is released, it means the the thing that it's released from is losing it that heat, right? Mm -hmm. So okay, so these electrons are brushing up against the copper atoms, you know, causing friction and uh heat to be released. Mm -hmm. now, I'm going to draw like a side view of the wire and you know the copper atoms here and the electrons here you know let's say they're traveling like this way okay now if this like wire got longer what do you think do you think the spread out what's up um spread out to a bit less friction uh well let's just say it's longer right okay mm -hmm. so what could happen then what well, what could happen to the copper and the electrons in the wire uh yeah think about like you know so like have you ever been like a subway mm -hmm. so imagine walking through like a subway car that's really crowded mm -hmm. and let's imagine that subway car is gets really long mm -hmm. you're gonna have to brush up against a lot more people right okay okay i think in my head i was thinking I think long space and yeah so you're thinking of something that you know i'll get to but mm -hmm. but yes if we if we don't change you know uh, if we just make it longer mm -hmm. it's going to cause more resistance or more friction which means more resistance right okay. Mm -hmm. so okay now what about let's say we have a significantly larger when i say larger i mean um a wire with a a, lar a larger cross sectional area mm -hmm. what can that oops what can that lead to or or what would happen in this case reduce the resistance yep why uh a is getting bigger so r would get smaller yeah well, let's say you know forget yeah. that yeah so tell me you know conceptually here and and you kind of did it before when you were kind of describing the the other example but yeah there's less movement um less brushing up against um the electrons and the copper so less friction yeah so should... that area increases which gives the electrons more opportunities to go and find you know pathways that are not as you know uh that don't have as much like copper and stuff right mm -hmm. so in a subway car imagine in instead of it being longer it's wider okay if it's wider there's more space to spread spread out right okay so i don't get how why getting bigger and getting longer wouldn't have the same effect like i I get it why you're saying that, but like you're getting longer, it would be the same amount, and but there's more to spread out. And if it's getting bigger, it's the same amount, but there's more to spread out. Uh huh. So, have you ever seen the movie Three Hundred? The Spartan movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been a while, but yeah. So, what was their big strategy thing? Just go at it. Well, so. It was to <laughs> it was to lure the Persians at this bottleneck or this choke point that mm -hmm. was the gates of fire, and here, if you have like this many Spartans, like you know, a row containing like five Spartans compared to like an entire army here, mm -hmm. right? They're they're the army here can't like can't 
get passed because it, it gets it gets uh they would have to pass through this region and it's yeah. So narrow yeah it, they can't do it and it, the 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 persians their larger like army um no longer can act on that as an advantage if 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 the people so throughout you know if it's like a, a smaller amount of people versus a larger amount of people yeah they would come in surround them right and destroy them right mm -hmm. but you can't do that here because there's only one way to get in okay so, yeah so it creates that bottleneck okay. in order for the persians to get past it's really hard to get past this way especially the longer it gets and you can also kind of think of it as like, oh, okay okay gotcha okay it makes sense now okay noted okay it makes sense okay i think i just needed I yeah well, yeah okay yeah yeah um yeah okay so yeah so that's so the larger the area the the more paths that the electrons can take which means that the resistance will go down mm -hmm. so and yeah now to bring it back to that this equation here that's why it's the l over the a okay right okay now the circuit i drew up here let's say this is r1 this is r2 is this in series or is it in parallel in a series all right so now let's think about adding uh, resistors in series, okay? Now, don't think of any formulas yet, but just think about what happens when, let's say, we add resistor one and resistor two. Uh, you create more friction? Uh, all right, just... what else, you know, what uh -huh. you can get, like, think about it in terms of, like, or, or tell me a little bit more about what you're saying. Uh, okay, so you're adding more and more resistors. That means it's getting harder to get through. Okay. Um, and then the the farther along you go, the harder and harder it gets. Uh huh. So if we were to get an equivalent resistance, right? Mm hmm. It will, wouldn't that just be, if, so, uh, wouldn't that just be, so if we add R1 and R2, mm -hmm. wouldn't that just create a new resistor that's just longer? Yeah. And if it's longer, resistance goes up or down? If it's longer, the resistance goes up. So the equivalent resistance for resistors in series is just, the sum of the resistors. Okay. Okay. All right, now above that, I drew two resistors in parallel. Mm -hmm. Now, what can happen here? Uh, so if it's going parallel, um, I'm trying not to think of the uh, equation. Um, so th don't think about the equation. Think about, so yeah. over here, this produced a longer resistor. Mm -hmm. Oops. Now. A bigger resistor. What's up? I mean, it would increase the area, make it bigger. Yeah. Larger area because electrons, you know, they can make a decision to go up this way or this way, right? Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to add resistors in parallel, we use what's called a reciprocal sum. Mm-hmm. with, you know, these denominators. And uh, 
a reciprocal sum will always be less than each resistor. Yes. One over, yes. So, yeah, so like, let's say R1 is three ohms. Let's say R2 is four ohms. And REQ, let's say, I'll make like maybe some choices here. Let's say A is seven ohms, let's say, 12 ohms, let's say five ohms, let's say two ohms. So, you know, don't do the actual calculation because uh, these numbers probably won't match up, but I just want you to see like, what would you want? Uh, what, what do you think would be the answer here? So are we saying this is, are we doing parallel? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you do, one over r, I mean, one over three plus one over oh, four. Let, let's not okay. even do that. Okay, okay. So. Um, sorry, what is the, what's the question then if. What, uh, what do you think the equivalent resistance would be um, from these choices? Oh, it would be less than them. Yep. Yeah, okay, gotcha, yeah. So which one would, would, would that be? Uh, sir? Two, I mean D. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was just to show you that in parallel, the equivalent resistance will be smaller than, e e than any of the resistors there. Okay, gotcha, okay, okay. Um, okay. This holds true for, you know, also, um, you know, this, the, le uh, the lens equation. Because that's a reciprocal sum as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, oh, and then if you needed to calculate that, um, another kind of trick would be just the REQ is equal to the product over the sum. Oh, okay. Okay, noted. So would it would I be wrong if I looked at all the ohms and just picked the one that had less? For the question. So like yeah, so if like I didn't do the calculation and I immediately picked D, would I is that like a bad thought process to go through? Oh no no. No, that's what I wanted you to do. Okay, gotcha. Okay, okay. Yeah. But okay, noted. Of course, if they give you the numbers, you want to do the calculation. Um I didn't have you do the calculation just because I didn't I just Kind of chose random numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Noted. Yep. All right. So okay, now let's talk about the. So what else could be could 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 there be besides um resistors? A capacitance. Okay. Tell me about that. Um. Like I, again, it's I think it's the opposite of resistor. There's, um, in terms of like the equations, um, but, but yeah, see if you can tell me like what a capacitor is. is. Um, well, it's probably the opposite of resistance. So, well, uh, so it it'll probably have some things that are the opposite, but don't have that same. Thought. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Like um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. let, let me think. Um, What's like a, yeah, what were we going to say? So I was going to say, I know he has, um, like a pentasis has voltage in the equation. So it probably has to do with like, moving against oh don't worry about any equations yet okay no just think like thought process in terms of like the things that are in the equation the factors that are affecting it so yeah just, so just like 
Yeah. For most of the stuff, if you're yeah. able to visualize it, yeah. Good. So what what's like a when you visualize a capacitor, what comes to mind? Um were you like in EMT school and stuff? I I did CNA. What's that again? A nurse assistant. So similar to EMT, but not really kind of. What happens? Do you do you ever have some or if say someone's like heart stops? What? what do you do? Okay. What uh, tell me about that? Um. So you apply a charge to the heart. Okay. So you're and you're using voltage. Uh, like like the yes. So what they call, but yeah, <laughs> that's like the the. Um. So that's, yeah. those are capac. That's a capacitor. Okay. Right. So, for a lot of physics stuff, like this is a common. This is very common for students. Like, there's so much of an emphasis because of the way they teach physics to pre meds. Like, mm -hmm. they teach it like with you, the expectation that you're kind of like holding your calculator and you're just like, okay, give me things to plug in. But, mm -hmm. but, uh, but if you visualize it, right, and you know, and physics is, to me, physics is interesting because it it explains literally everything that I that's around you. So, yeah, you can think of like, you know, something like a defibrillator. You can see that, uh, so they're they're like rectangular ish square. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, and you have to let make it charge, mm -hmm. right? So, um, so basically, a capacitor, you know, uh, is a way to like store and store, which I guess I'll say is charge and discharge, um. Uh, I guess like discharge itself. I was gonna write like maybe stores charge and releases the charge, but that's the same thing as charging it up and then discharging it. Mm -hmm. uh, so so uh yeah, uh, discharge. I'll say like I'll just write whatever a charge of let's say Q. Um, let's say like per volt. So your capacitor equation would be the Q over V. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you ask yourself like, okay, capacitor store charges, um, batteries store charges, right? Why, mm -hmm. why do capacitors exist if you could store a charge in a volt uh, in 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 a in a in like a battery which would have a voltage. Um. So you can control how much charge you put. Um. Think about. I guess now think about the. Uh, equation that I wrote and like the proportionality between, the capacitance and the voltage. Mm -hmm. So that's what type of proportion? Inverse. Mm -hmm. So a capacitor lets you store charge without needing so high of a voltage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what essentially happens Okay, so what essentially happens is that electrons, you know, go here and they this is the capacitor here and they you know, they can't jump, you know, past that gap. So mm -hmm. electrons will start getting stored on that plate, the capacitor mm -hmm. plate. Mm -hmm. 
and it's going to try to and it's going to fit in as many electrons as it possibly can um until it reaches its maximum point at which point it you know it, it, it's fully charged mm -hmm. and then when you do the discharge that's when it will you know charge or or send the electrons over past that gap to the next one mm -hmm. so um so, so that yeah the when we shock into hard so we're saying that like we're starting to charge on the pads and then when we um place them on the body that's when we're discharging them yes okay yeah so um yeah and when you discharge it it's it's instant okay. uh, but uh but yeah so okay now we could also see then that like the like the area you know of the plate mm -hmm. it can store more charge right the larger the area of the plate mm -hmm. yes which and if it stores more charge it could also create a larger capacitance. Yes. And and how do you think these would work here. Um, so when you increase, so in terms of like, when you increase something and decrease how that affects the capacitance. Oh, sorry. Um, so these two that I drew on the bottom, uh -huh. what are, what, what, what are they? So one's in a, the, this one right here is in a series and this one is in, uh, in parallel. Good. And how do you think? Um, so when you do need in a series, it has more passages to pass through, so it makes it harder. Does it? Oh wait, when you say harder, I mean like, um, it has to like, like it's jumping from like here to uh -huh. here, and then. It's gonna to another one versus here. You can just flow through. When you say flow through, um, I don't know how to say it. Is you make... like going like that? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, you it so it won't go like that, right? Because it'll because the end that's attached to the battery is where the charges will store, and then when it discharges, it goes from that left plate to the right plate. Okay. It doesn't go like Okay, gotcha. Okay, okay. Um So I guess if it's on the series one, it'll go from one plate to another plate. The plate's closer so it be better capacitance. Like it'll I don't know how to explain it, but <laughs> So yeah. so over here, what did we find was proportional to capacitance? Uh where are you? Okay. Um yeah. The area. area, right? Mm -hmm. And so capacitance proportional to area. Mm -hmm. It should be inversely proportional to the length, right? Or when I say length, like the distance between the 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 plates. Yeah. So now use that just like we did with the resistors, mm -hmm. use for capacitors now. Okay, so if it's in a series, um, the more area, the, yeah, so one sec, let me just think this through. <laughs> uh, I could draw kind of like, so if I added these two capacitors, it would create, whoops, like this. Mm -hmm. Right? See how mm -hmm. that distance that distance increases? Yeah. So 
you know, if distance increases, capacitance should go up or down. Uh, it should increase. Um, if the wait, wait, distance is increasing, capacitance will go down. Yes. Should, yeah. So, what do you think the formula for adding capacitors in series would be? Um. So if it's going down, it would be the one over the, C one plus. Yeah. Exactly. Oops. And then the one in parallel, you are essentially creating, uh, you know, uh, a capacitor with a larger plate area, right? Because this is essentially just, oops. More to store. Like that, right? Yeah. yeah. So in parallel, you would just straight up add them, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So, so yeah, it helps to, you know, understand why the equations are the way that they are. Yes. Um, and any questions about no, that? That makes sense, especially the examples she gave me. I work really good with examples. So, mm -hmm. um, I think using this idea, I'm going to try to redo that one section that had this, I mean, I guess a lot of the sections that had this um, topic on it and see if it makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, that's super helpful. I really appreciate it. Yep. And did I share that physics resource with you that? So you shared the uh, general MCAT um, folder. Okay. Try this link that I sent. In the chat. Okay. So this is a, you know, prob this would be like my number one go to, uh, to go over physics concepts. Oh, I had no idea this was something. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. So there's different like if you hit like topic chapters, it'll open a drop down for the different topics. Mm -hmm. Going mm -hmm. left and right will go through the cards as well. Um, mm -hmm. I sent you one for Kirchhoff's rules, and whoops. And that's just, yeah, this. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, um, but yeah, I would, uh, so yeah, that resource, this resource is excellent to like review um, physics concepts. And the questions are really good too. Uh, mm -hmm. the questions aren't really like MCAT, like, like, yeah. Anything like that, but the questions are really important because they all try to show you some type of, Ex either some exception or some type of like pattern or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I will definitely check it out. I yeah, the Kirchhoff. Yeah. So there could be some so there could be some difficult, really difficult. So Kirchhoff's like second rule here mm -hmm. can be kind of difficult. And um and then there's also like these two types of problems, like one's called a Wheatstone Bridge that uh could it be difficult and yeah there's some okay. other, but but yeah okay. it should answer most of the it does yeah because i before i was literally just mm -hmm. know the equations and hopefully they give me numbers to plug it in yeah. <laughs> but now i get the concepts yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you gotta yeah you want to be careful with that like it's funny because whenever i uh, feed like questions to, uh, to the to chat tbt like for MCAT, like it's wrong, like 90% of the time, because it just like randomly plugs in, like it just takes the numbers that are in the problem and just, just randomly right. kind of just plugs them yeah. in. Stuff yeah. That sense. But, but yeah, okay, awesome. So yeah, that's uh, super helpful. Um, yep. That's what I'm going to do practice questions on. Okay. Thank you so much again. So um, do you know, remember how to uh, uh, export? So on the top left, those three horizontal lines. Uh, sorry. Um, top left. Okay. So circuits. Okay, I see it. Okay, cool. Oh yeah. So if if you hit that, the three horizontal bars, it'll open up a drop down menu. I'm saving it as a PDF. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty much. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank you. Awesome. So let's see, when would you like to
Um, so let me look at my work calendar. Uh, so next week we can do, um, next week is the 29th. We can do Friday or 